Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. I am joined here today by Quinnipiac freshman Maddie Samoskevich. Maddie had 107 points with Shattuck St. Mary's last year and won a silver medal with the U18 uh, team with Team USA. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Maddie, and how's everything going? Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, everything's going good. I just got back from practice and I have my first game tomorrow. So we've just been getting prepared for that. And I'm super excited about that. Yeah, and uh, you guys are scheduled to play at LIU on Sunday. What challenges does that team bring and what are your plans to, uh, um, to stop some of their um, offensive chances they have? Yeah, so we've been watching a ton of video on them and like you can tell that they're going to be really aggressive and like they're big, fast skaters that move the puck well. So like we're just planning on playing fast and playing hard to get and having good sticks and being good defense. So I'm excited to play them. Yeah, and how has your first year been like at Quinnipiac so far? And what have you overall taken away from your college hockey experience? Yeah, it's been awesome. Definitely not the year I've been expecting, but I also wouldn't want to go through the situation with any other team. Like they're all so positive and they're fun to be around. So it's just been really fun to be with them. Yeah, and what have you improved on the most this season compared to last year with Shattuck? Um, definitely my like hockey IQ and like um just I feel like my game honestly all around has gone better because college hockey is just so different it's such like a team game and it's just like the details that I've learned I think I've gone better all around yeah and you've also had to adjust to many schedule changes throughout the year uh, how have you mentally stayed prepared for all those changes that are probably going to happen to your schedule well being on Quinnipiac like I feel like that's kind of helped me because we're all so positive and just like we have the mindset, control the controllables. So whatever happens, happens. And I kind of go into every practice, like I'm going to get better and um, use this opportunity to basically get better and be ready for whatever comes my way. Yeah. And you're also going to play this season without any fans. Would that be an adjustment for yourself or are you used to that in some sort of aspect? I mean, yeah, I feel like in some sort of aspect, I'll be ready for it just because being on Quinnipiac, they're all so we all cheer for each other and celebrate each other's successes. So I feel like we're all each other's fans, kind of. So it kind of will, won't feel any different. I also don't know what the normal is like. So yeah, definitely. Now three on three overtime has also been introduced to college hockey. I know you haven't played in one yet, but how excited are you to potentially be in one this year? And what's it going to be like to have more offense and chances? I'm excited. I've actually never been in a game within three on three overtime so I feel like it would be pretty a pretty cool experience and hopefully I get to play in it but definitely I think it yeah I think just playing fast and getting pucks to the net and creating scoring opportunities will be the best possible scenario for a three on three overtime. Now how have the upperclassmen helped your transition into college hockey and who in particular has been the most helpful uh, for that transition? I mean, I feel like, honestly, you can't really just pick, like, they're all so helpful and so nice and positive. I did have a, we have, like, sisters at Quinnipiac, so I actually had an older sister, Laura Lumblond, or is that how you say, I think that's how you say your last name, yeah, um, and she's just, during quarantine before the season started, she was so helpful, like, reaching out to me, answering any questions I have, but Overall, I think they're also positive, easy to talk to, but like they're also call you out if you're not doing something um, right, which like makes us all better people. So it's really cool to have them uh, like above me. So it's nice. It's been fun. Yeah, definitely. And how has your freshman class looked like so far in your eyes? And how have you tried to adapt to the new team since the rest of the team or rest of the freshman class will be a very key part to Quinnipiac in the future? Yeah, I mean, I love my class. They're also we're also like different and unique. So like we all bring different parts of ourselves to the table. So it's been fun to be around, but um, they're all really good people, but on the ice, they're all really good players as well. Like they bring the energy on and off the ice. And yeah, we got, they're all really big. We got a couple of big bodies in the freshman class. So they've been looking really good. And I feel like we'll be a big, um, we'll have a big contribute to the team and the success. So now the ECAC looks very different this year with only four teams. How will you prepare for those teams at the start of the conference season, knowing that you're going to have to play them a lot throughout the year? I mean, I definitely think that we're going to be watching a ton of video on the team. So I feel like that's going to help me be prepared. But I also like the upper class and have been talking to us like how 
rank like ranks don't really matter like it's all about who shows up that night everyone's so good and everyone wants to win so I just have to be prepared for every game and go in playing my best that night and be ready to win now switching gears I want to talk about your quarantine this summer what was that like and what did you do over the off season to prepare for this year I mean yeah it's kind of bummer that my high school season ended so early but I feel like I kind of, in the beginning of quarantine, I kind of accepted the fact that I wasn't going to be on the ice as much as I usually am during my off season. So I kind of focused on my strength and conditioning more, more of my conditioning. Like I kind of dialed in on that just to be ready and prepared for the season. But overall, I think I had a really good off season in quarantine and like my sister and my brother are home. So they were able to, we have a backyard ring. So they're out there with me just like teaching me new skills and going through some drills with me. So overall, I think I had a really good quarantine and I got better from it. Yeah. Was there any challenges you faced? Because talking to other college hockey players, they had trouble finding ice time or finding gyms that were open because of all the restrictions. Was there any challenge that you faced in particular and how did you try to overcome that? In the beginning, it was definitely hard for me, but having my sister home, she was just always there for me and like helping me. We did quarantine workouts at home. So that was fun. And she kind of, having our backyard rink was nice too because like it's a year-round rink so it's pavement so we were able to do some street hockey and it was just fun having my brother and sister home because they were also positive so like they were teaching me to be positive and it was nice to have them home. Now I want to start off talking about the beginning of your hockey career you're from Connecticut how did you start playing hockey and falling in love with the sport? So well my dad actually played in high school um, so that kind of got my older sister Melissa into it and then from there, my dad kind of pushed my brother and I to get into it, my brother Mackie. And he was always more into it than me, I guess. I, I feel like when I was little, I wasn't really into hockey just because I wasn't really good at it and I didn't really enjoy it. So I actually quit for a year. Um, but within that year, my dad like made me go to all of my brother and sister's games and stuff. So I was in the stands watching them and just like watching hockey take over their life and like watch, see how much, seeing how much they love it kind of made me feel left out. So I wanted to be a part of it. So after that season, I kind of told my dad that I wanted to get back into it and like told my brother and sister, I wanted to be good at it. So I guess like on our backyard rink, they would take me out with them and like teach me new skills, go through drills with me. And my dad would even come out and go through drills with me. So I feel like once I put the work into it and like realized this is what I want to do, I kind of fell in love with the game and that kind of got me into it. Yeah, and you were mentioning you grew up in a hockey family. Your sister, Melissa, played for Quinnipiac for a few years and now is a head co uh, assistant coach at Penn State. And your brother, Mackie, is projected to be a top pick in next year's NHL draft. Uh, talk about growing up in that hockey environment and how did that help your development as a player overall? Yeah, I mean, growing up, they were both so good. So they taught me so many things and just like their worth ethic and how dedicated they were kind of made me be like, wow, this is really cool. Like you have something that you care about so much. So kind of made me want to be just like them. And I kind of look up to both of them. So it's really cool to be a Yeah, what is the communication like between your siblings, especially Melissa, because she went through the recruiting process with Quinnipiac. And yeah, just talk about that communication overall. I mean, yeah, we're all so close. Like at our, in our house, like all we talk about is hockey. So it's really cool. And yeah, it's just, I kind of learned a lot from them. Now, did you have a favorite player growing up? And what part of their game do you try to emulate to your game a little bit? Um, I would say growing up, I was more interested in, I kind of watched Eric Carlson a lot, just because like his speed and how good of a skater he was and like how he's able to make plays so fast. I kind of grew up wanting to be as fast as him, I guess, and like have his speed. But um, recently, I actually have been really into watching Kale McCarr. I remember like the first time I watched him, I was amazed by how he plays and like all around, he's such a good player. So I feel like I've taken a lot of him and watching him. It's just so cool to watch. Now, before Quinnipiac, you played for Shattuck St. Mary's. How'd you get the opportunity to play at that prestigious school? Well, my sister actually went there and my brother went there with me. So we kind of, we kind of, my sister loved it there. So she kind of, we kind of followed her there, but being at Shattuck was awesome and I feel like I'm, it has made me the player I am today. Yeah. What's it like to be part of that historic program with so many legendary hockey players that went there before you did? Yeah. I mean, that was such an awesome experience. I loved it there. I remember 
when I first got to Shattuck, I had so many role models that I looked up to just because there's so many girls that are like have so much skill and are the best players in America that go through Shattuck. So I feel like throughout my years, I just had, I got to look up to so many people and I learned so many, um, so many parts of my game, not only from my coaches, but from the girls on my team. So it was such a cool experience and it's just amazing to be a part of. Now, how did your time at Shattuck help prepare you for college hockey? Because I was looking at some of the rosters and you played with a lot of D1 commits like Casey O'Brien and McKenna Webster, who are both playing at Wisconsin at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I was really close with them. And being at Shattuck, they kind of taught me like what their worth ethic was so good. And I kind of just like since we were all really close, I kind of followed after them and they showed me like the ropes and stuff. So it was really cool. And like I'll be friends being at Shattuck with them I'm still close friends with them today and we still talk and like the memories I have with them I'll remember forever so yeah what was your favorite memory at Shattuck from your time there probably nationals in California just because like I've never been to California and it was so cool there um it was warm too which was kind of weird playing hockey um but just yeah and we got to play at the Am Anaheim Ducks arena so that was really cool. And the arena, it was like a new arena, so it was really nice. And it was just such a cool experience to be a part of. Yeah, and you also got to play for the U.S. under-18 team. Uh, what was it like getting the chance uh, to represent your country on that type of national stage and going to Japan, a place that hockey isn't that well-known there? Yeah, that was such an amazing experience. Like, I have memories from there that I'll remember forever. And just being in Japan, like the culture and everything, it was so cool. And also being able to play hockey – it was just an amazing experience and like I'll remember that forever but playing hockey there like I was with USA at that tournament for like a good two weeks so it was really long and it was just such a fun experience like I learned so much from my coaches my teammates and it's just something I'll remember forever. Yeah was there any culture shock you had playing hockey in Japan because it seems to me it's like a very cool place to play hockey. Yeah it was definitely different like everything was different about it um it was, yeah. I mean, even the food there, uh, post-game meal, it was just different. Like, I wasn't used to it, but I eventually I got used to it, so it was fun. Now, what does that silver medal mean to you overall? Um, yeah, it's, it's honestly such a cool feeling to be able to have a silver medal. Um, it's just an experience that I am so grateful that I was able to be a part of, and like having that silver member just like metal just makes me like remember all the um all the memories I have from that tournament and it's just something that's so cool and amazing yeah and talk to me about your recruiting process what was that like and why did you choose to go to Quinnipiac um well when my, my sister played at Quinnipiac so when I was at Shattuck I was coming home for winter break and the highlight of my breaks would be going to like the Quinnipiac games to watch my sister. So like growing up, I loved Quinnipiac. But then when it got to my recruitment process, I will admit I was nervous to commit to Quinnipiac just because like I'll be known as like Melissa's younger sister, like being under my sister. But then I remember when I was talking to Cass, like Cass, my head coach, she um, kind of like ensured me that I was going to be my own person, like have my own name so that I loved hearing that. And being at Quinnipiac, like, that's how it is, and I love it here, and that is the best decision I've ever made in my life, so. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit. What's it like to play under Coach Turner, and what has she taught you about the game that you didn't know before? Because she's probably one of the best uh, college hockey coaches, in my opinion. Yeah, she's such, she's a great coach, like, awesome coach. I'd love, um, she's taught me a lot this year and already has improved my game a lot. Um, it's also so cool to have a coach that, you can see cares about her team so much and she's so positive and easy to talk to, but not only has she improved like my game on the ice, she's also improved my game off the ice. She kind of teaches us to be prepared for everything and the details that make us better people. So I love having her as a coach and it's been great. Yeah. And uh, what's been the biggest adjustment you have had to make to college hockey so far? The biggest adjustment, definitely um, the speed of the game. Everyone's a lot stronger. So, and like at Shattuck, it was kind of, everyone was so good. So like, it was kind of like an individual game, but here at Quinnipiac, it's definitely more of a team game. And so that I had to adjust to a little bit, but 
also you could I could say like um with COVID and everything just I wasn't really expecting the season to be like this but like I said before this being on Quinnipiac it's really helped me adapt to it and like be positive about everything so yeah Yeah, we're now in the non-hockey segment of the podcast my first question is you're from Connecticut which place has the best pizza there in your opinion (laughs) there's a lot um there's actually in New Haven there's a road that I was actually on I went to yesterday it's like Little Italy I think it's called it has like a bunch of um, famous um, Italian restaurants. So there's like Zanelli's. That's a big one for our team. Um, I know a couple of girls go there a lot. There's Peppy's Pizza. My family is a big fan of Peppy's. Um, there's honestly a lot. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I've never been to New Haven, but I've heard it has probably the best pizza in the world. That's why I like to ask people who are from Connecticut that question, just because I'm interested. Yeah. There's also one, Zoo Parties is a really good one. We go nice. to yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out one day. Yeah. Now, what music do you like to listen to before a game? Oh, um, I feel like I'm I'm really easy going with music. Like I can listen to anything and kind of it would kind of get me ready for the game. But maybe some like rap music sometimes, or uh, yeah, I guess rap or EDM, maybe something like that. Now, who's the funniest on the team? There's a lot of funny people. We joke around a lot, but oh, I have to think about this. Um, I feel like there's a couple, like Renee Saltness is funny, um, Katie Huntington. I feel like I can't just pick one. They're all so funny. But Gabby Vich, I can't say her last name, but Gabby V. Yeah there's everyone's funny like it's yeah it's a good time to be around them now who has the best style on the team in your opinion the best style oh um I feel like Kendall Cooper a freshman has really good she has really good style now back to some hockey questions before we let you go um what do you think has to be done to grow women's hockey in your opinion um to grow uh Honestly, I feel like women's hockey is on the right track. Like it's the game has improved a lot over the years, but um, I feel like maybe if checking came into the game, maybe that would get, make the game a lot faster and just make the everyone more competitive and aggressive. But other than that, I feel like the game has gone improved a lot over the years and we're heading in the right track. So. Yeah, and my last question is, uh, what should I do better as an interviewer to improve this podcast and make this platform better? Um, I honestly think you did a really good job. Like, this is my first time doing a podcast, so I don't really know much. But other than that, I had a good time, and you had some really good questions. So, well, I appreciate that. Now, is there any shots like to give before we let you go? Uh, sh- probably my family, my sister, my brother, like. I wouldn't be the the person I am today without them. They've made a really big impact in my life. And it's just, I love being a part, having like the Sam Eskevich last name. It's just, they're amazing people. And probably my coaches, my teammates, my friends, they're all a part. They all, they all have made a huge impact in my life. So. Well, thank you so much, Maddie, for coming on and talking about your hockey experience. I really appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the year and we'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck with your podcast. Thank you. I appreciate it.